Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Attack Productions. Today I have Bankrupt being joined once again by Jimmy and Austin. Yeah. Ooh. Shut the fuck up, Austin. <laughs> trying to cut hey, you off. Damn. You know what? I'm a delight. Uh, there's buttons up below if you click them to there for a reason, but today's matchup is Jimmy versus Austin. Uh, we got Austin back with King Cole, not King Cole, uh, King Piccolo, <laughs> and he's playing against Android 16. Guys, let's take it away. I don't want to talk about Austin. <laughs> I wait for you and you don't say anything. I want to say it's something. No, there was like Children. a good five seconds. No, pause. what I'm saying is I don't want to talk about Dragon Ball. Let, well, then I will. I don't, right. I don't want to hear you talk about it. Hey, well, today right, here, I'm um, mad. <laughs> Y'all know that like jogging was like invented in the 60s? All right, so... That's that's true. Look it up. Shit's so wild. I have, I have never played against Android 16 before. That's a fib. So this was this was fun. I have <laughs> I played a weird janky version online where before that one uh, free crit Janimba got taken away, the blue one, I had ran an aggressive version with that and playing the one drops one like you know, one drop uh, skillesses and running with the arrivals from the energy and it was fun. It was just so inconsistent and I've never played against an actual Android 16 deck. It can be very scary at times because you got to f- uh, remember that not only do- can they arrival from the energy, they also have their hand as well. Yeah. So like when you see the field, you're like, okay, that's there. Got to be aware of that. And then he also played bad omen in his energy turn one. And that's a whole nother thing. In my opinion, it's just like, I love that card. But seeing your opponent plays it, you kind of go, okay, I got to be careful because if I get too, too far along in this match and he gets me out of one life, I'm screwed. Yeah. I, I compare Bad Omen to not exactly, but kind of the same thing that uh, that uh, Android 17 turning the tide puts into the game state. Where you know if you're playing against a mono blue deck or really any blue deck uh, that's going to get to that turn, you're pretty much playing with one less life than normal. Because when you get to turn seven, they drop it. If you have two life, you have one life. It doesn't matter pretty much what's going on unless your field is insane and you can combo out or you have a happen to have a blocker. But bad omen, pretty much once it's in the energy, you have one less life for the rest of the game. Yeah, and I'm playing King Piccolo, which I already have technically one less life because you can count the arrival at seven total life overall. So I'm even playing with less life than normal. Like, which is not a hindrance to King Piccolo. King Piccolo yeah. starting at at eight life versus six life changes nothing about the deck. Yeah, um, it's like it, it's not a hindrance. It, it probably shouldn't even be on the card. I I don't I don't think the deck running at eight life would blow anything out. Um, but the the thing that makes sixteen such a powerhouse of a deck is that it has options for pretty much every single situation uh and your hand is extended into the into the energy you can combo from the drop area so it's almost like hand control really doesn't affect it because you still have plays no matter what aggro doesn't affect it because you're blue you have stuff like uh sensu bean uh and a ton of blockers um Mid range of control is kind of a problem, but you also have your own control elements that you can slow down the game and kind of have a tug of war of who's getting to control the pace. Like 16 is probably one of the most complete packages, uh, 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 archetype wise, out of any deck in this game, in my opinion. It was really fun to play against too. Like, I really enjoyed it. I've o- I always wanted to see like an actual, like, you know, Android 16 deck. And, you know, besides playing at the shop where we don't play anywhere else, I don't play online too much anymore. So it was just, it was really cool seeing this. I, it made, it really made me want to like try out the deck and play because it, it just looked like a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I have an absolute blast every time I play 16. It's uh, easily one of my favorite decks. Because um, I don't want to say you don't have to think while playing it because you kind of do. 
but it's just one of those decks that it just feels smooth to play in every situation. Like, I can't think of a matchup where I would be like, ah, oh, man, I don't want to play 16 versus this deck. It's always and like, like it's always like, oh, let's see how, you know, how it's going to break down. I feel, like What's that, I feel like there's checkpoints, like, with it. Like, you swing. Okay, cool. Attack goes through. All right, activate battle. Uh, yep, got one in my drop. Boom. All right, cool. I can arrive rival now. Do I do it for my hand? Eh, my energy. I can, and then I get to charge a top. With it once return, charge top card of your deck, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, like, there's like checkpoints there, and you just kind of like, what path do you want to take this time around with it? And yeah. Both, and then all that's once per turn, right? Uh, yes. You can you can arrival from the energy as much as you want, but you only get the top deck once. Uh, and you only get the activate battle once. So if you want to maximize your free combo, you have to um, arrival multiple times. And usually you want to try to stick one from the energy uh, and then one from the hand. But there's some situations where you do have to throw out two from the energy and then you go down an energy, which isn't super, super bad. Uh, but there are some situations where that can really suck. I can't remember. Do you run more than just the the boo unison in this one, or is it just the boo unison? For, like, it's the just the boo use? unison. Okay. How many do you uh, out of it? I, I run three, uh, okay. only because I, I own I three. Run. I would run. I would run four if I if I had a fourth one. I got you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have experimented with the hit unison. Uh, because the main thing that boo gives you is the is the draw, which is huge because you don't draw on the backside of your leader. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I've just found that while it, it does feel bad to tap four sometimes, I'd rather tap four just for the extra blocker and also having double strike on the unison and yeah. comboing with the leader into a 30k double strike is pretty nasty. Yeah, I think like the whole package wise overall, like the hit one's really fun, but that boo's just better because you also have that auto on attack to get rid of a card. Mm-hmm. And it's just that's just so good. Like it's it's definitely, I think arguably the best blue unison in the game do you run i think i think it's easily what's up do you run four bionic bullets bionic bullets is that the android 18 super combo uh no i run two bionic blitz and two of the it's just the regular draw goku uh, okay. I don't run the quality super combo Vegeta, uh, just due to exactly what happens right here, where I end up rowing a Piccolo. Yeah, that's what I was curious about. Yeah, so uh, there's there's very few mono green cards in this list, uh, Piccolo being one of them, uh, that if you top deck it, you really can't touch it after that, so I just went with a standard, you know, four or less life draw super combo. Um. Which, this Piccolo, I've been really down on this Piccolo from, uh, for a while, but this guy's pretty nasty, um, especially in a deck that can arrival so heavily and always keep that bond two yeah. up, and plus having that extra draw in a deck with a leader does not draw is massive, um, and it's just, Very good. It's, it's just solid effect, you just blow up anything five or less, uh, it does not own a barrier, of course, but you get the draw for it. Uh, and he's a barrier himself, 20k body, like, assimilated ability is pretty damn good. <laughs> it's a card that I feel like disappeared for a long time, but then in certain decks like this one, it can make that nice little comeback. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Uh, which I think this is one of the few cards that hasn't seen a lot of reprints. I think it was just the Judge promo, and if I'm missing another one, I, I don't think I am. I think you uh, are. I think it was only Judge promo in the draft yeah. box. Yeah, so I, I I don't know the prices of these right now, but I it might just be a case of people are not, just don't have them. Uh, they're not in circulation, because I think you would see it uh, a lot more. Uh, and to talk about right there, I did use the Piccolo ability to blow up your piano, completely forgetting that you can just board him again, because you're a dick. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I would have much rather it killed the topo there, but um, uh, I should have read your cards. And there was a point earlier I meant to we I meant to mention that. Uh, so Jimmy and I were talking, and we were kind of goofing around, and I went ahead and plus one my unison. I think it was last turn, and I <laughs> forgot to place an energy. And Jimmy was like, "Oh, just go ahead and place one," because we were just goofing around, and I was like, "Oh crap!" 
<laughs> so that the people I know someone's gonna pick that up. They're probably already commenting it by now and put and entering it in the comment, but that is what happened. If you posted a comment about that, you moan when you wipe your ass. <laughs> uh let's go back to the video, guys. No. No, but for real though, like I still can't believe that shit. Jogging was invented in the sixties. Like I figured that like that would be like you know, like I, I feel like ancient the term Greece. the term was invented probably, but not the actual event, the act of doing it. Yeah, but it's funnier if you think that people just never jogged until nineteen sixty three. It was either a full it, sprint it, it, yeah. or a walk. Absolutely. <laughs> um also, during this match, uh, I don't know if it comes across on camera, but every single time he played a card, I'm like, hey, which one is that one? Yeah. And then he would he, tell me every single time, because every one of these Demon Clan right looked right the exactly fucking same. They are all the same exact card. Yeah, the... Uh... <laughs> and there's only, like, one that really matters. That's a tambourine, really, that God, does, dang. like, crazy things. I, I looked it up. I can't believe I finally did that. Yeah, it's 1963, right? Two, 1962. Not 1962. Okay, I was one year and, off, but still. And, and the the guy credit for introducing the concept probably goes to Bill Bowerman, a legendary runner, running coach at the University of Oregon, and a future co-founder of Nike. He said he discovered jogging on a trip to New Zealand in 1990. Sorry, 1962. But he discovered. Uh, we're, we're moving on. All right. <laughs> He found it in New Zealand. He found he, <laughs> he found he jogging. Dis- he discovered it in New Zealand, which throws me off. I don't. I don't. I might look into this so, later because I'm kind of confused. Is so then is he also the partial creative joggers? I don't know. I fucking apparently joggers. running was invented in, in roughly 1748. I, I guess the term <laughs> running was. I don't know, but we're we're being majorly sidetracked. Your board is gone. Yeah, it it, it, it did uh, it did get blown up. Um, and it was all to just remove the piccolo, but piccolo has barrier, which is my yeah. favorite word now. <laughs> um, yeah. But like, I like I said, the, <laughs> the the nice thing about this, the piccolo does have to uh, has to have bond too. But since I can arrival out so cheaply and easily, it's like I pretty much always have a permanent bond uh, for one energy. Those uh, friggin' Namekians and their bonds, man. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have exactly. no bonds. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but this situation allowed me to put out Star Vault Defender, which is the tournament pack promo that blew up the four drop Piccolo. And then I had Bond 2 to blow out the, uh, he was 40k at the time, I think. Yeah, he was uh, 40k. The 40k attacker. Um, which the thing that uh, annoyed me the most out of getting blown out there was losing my East Kai on board. Because while she does so little uh over the span of most games it's just a, enough annoyance that it can cause the opponent to play weirdly around her yeah um, but for one energy and she replaces herself like it's fantastic i love her in this list i forget she exists because like i don't see her that often when you saw that i was like oh yeah it's That's like it's fun. like the sideboard king but like i found that yeah. she just fits really well on the main board for 16 at least for me and uh our locals you know, I really liked her in that list list. I feel like there's a lot of good decks to play against this past weekend for that, too. Because mm-hmm. we had a lot. Uh, we had a couple yellow players, so like you had their counterplays or their negate freezes. <laughs> you have uh, me playing AOD, Austin playing Glow. I mean, uh, I think uh, Dalton in was case, playing something that could do something, I think. But I, I, don't, I, I don't want to talk to this fucking Dalton guy anymore. But you may have missed it there. I uh, I just performed uh, Android 16's alternate level 3 super from Fighters and absolutely obliterated King Piccolo. I actually yeah. won the game right there. We yeah, probably just cut you. the video. Uh, no. And uh, we can go back to talking about uh, the, no. the jogging thing. But to talk about the Samasu play... Um, I knew he had the ability to blow up my field. Uh, I just completely forgot. A, I'm playing against red. They can neg out indestructible. So that's the only reason I put the Zamasu out there was to have indestructible. Even though I couldn't swing with it uh, due to him violet raying earlier in the turn. Um, but I was like, yeah. I want that. I want that permanent bond target. But then uh, something happens in this match. I, I'll let you guess so, what happens. What's Zamasu's bond power again? Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. Uh... Yeah. What's that Piccolo uh, body uh, power again? 
20,000. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Am I sensing a minus but two coming? The No, because it's indestructible, and then yeah. the, the barrier. But this is what happens. Yeah. He, he plays the, the one card that says ignoring barrier. That's yeah. right. The one card I have, yeah. 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 <laughs> and I had forgotten that I played Wild and Raze the last turn. So I was like, why didn't you swing with him during that match? I was like, why didn't you swing? I, I, I was like looking at you. I was looking over my uh, proverbial glasses. I was like, hey, uh, you, you call in unisons or battle cards? And you were like, uh, <laughs> battle cards. And I was like, well, shit. Yeah. Um, so you immediately dropped this guy, blew out my field, uh, and then you minused him, which put him at one marker. Yep. Um, and... I, I did not see this play. If you are a Android 16 player, you already see it. Uh, the uh, Android 16 limiter disengaged, which is one of the best cards in the entire deck. Uh, he's currently in my energy. Yeah, uh, I believe I see it on one of these attacks, and we'll get to it when it happens, and then walk it back to say what I should have done. Should just not not chose the block. Is that what you're trying to say? Uh, yeah, because I, I had three markers. Um, I probably should have, on the attack, went ahead and minus and then block, but whatever. Uh, I still felt pretty safe, uh, to be completely honest. Because uh, I'm still yeah. setting at a decent life total, and I have so much energy open. And you mentioned that you should have done the auto on that boo also. Yeah. I think the auto is a weak tackle of a battle card, though. Or you mean before the uh, unison uh, swing? It might just be attack. I don't remember. But uh, what happened here? You were at one marker. If you don't know what um, Limiter Disengage does, there's an activate battle that I can KO him, choose one of my opponent's uh, unison cards, remove a marker from it, uh, which he was at one marker. So it ripped the marker, has revive, drop a blue-green, put it back out there, and then I still have more Android 16s to play. Uh, yeah. What I should have done is kept my unison around, uh, and then while we were attacking into the leader, comboed out, um, arrived limiter disengaged, blew out the unison, and then, you know, easy peasy from there. I, I can just keep boarding my 16s and just deal with whatever you had putting on the field. Uh, I think a cool facet of Android 16 is that it's one of the decks that relies on the character itself like it's not like you know you rely on the whole like all the androids you're pretty much mm-hmm. solely playing android 16 and an android 16 yeah. leader i think it's really cool yeah like that's what i'm saying like it's just one of the most sound archetypes throughout the entire game like the only other deck i can really think of is like ss4 bardock and aod that's really themed and also really good uh but android 16 just has so many good tools and it being blue it has access to all good blue stuff you can you have access to green energy while you don't get all of the fantastic green cards because they require green leaders you still get access to a lot of the um the the value plays from it um like i i think 16 is just a really really strong archetype and i think it's great like uh you know it topped you know uh, it, it top Nats, you know, it's that good. And it's also just a fantastic deck to play at locals as well, because you never know what you're going to see at locals. And Android 16 has at least one tool to deal with whatever you're going to run into. Uh, so right here, I was just playing into trying to get you down to the point where I could just throw out a bad omen from the energy and just blow you out. Uh, but you're doing a really good job of uh, not putting yourself into uh, such a precarious situation. <laughs> yeah, I had placed that one uh, Piccolo Jr. in my life so I could combo with it from the life as defense. Mm-hmm. I was like, I had to think so far ahead. I'm like, I, I got to do stuff. I'm, I'm at a, <laughs> I have like, I think like four cards or some five guards. Not a lot. Yeah, like I think I just counted five there. And mm-hmm. I knew it was coming. So I'm like, I just got to got to do something. Uh, and I I only run two Bad Omen, and I could have had the option of playing the 7-drop 16, which is a 4-cost that will search the deck, add a 21 to hand, then play a 21 from hand. But one Bad Omen's in the energy, the other one's in the drop area, the only other 21 is, uh, 
I think it's I don't remember the name of it. A beautiful scientist. It's the uh, it charges a energy and then blows up something, which is not going to do anything for me. Um, so I decided just to throw out twenty one was a hail mary play, but I felt pretty decent about it because it puts a twenty five k body on board, blows up your super combo, gets rid of a life. Uh, so I was just really hoping you didn't stock up on super combos while I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I already used the th- three I had in my hand. <laughs> oh, just three? Mm-hmm. Just three. Technically yeah, four, because uh, Nabbit counts twice. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. But yeah, Nabbit got his shit slapped. And with that being said, thank you for tuning in. Keep mine as button simple and on the screen. And like always, read your curse, know your place, and fluff out.